I'm be coming from the book of First Peter. First Peter chapter five. If you have your Bibles. First Peter chapter five. Verse six through nine. First Peter chapter five. Verse six through nine. The title of my message is Resist Steadfast in the Faith. Resist Steadfast in the Faith. Just a little bit of a background of the book of Peter. It was written by the Apostle Peter. And at this time when he wrote the book, he was about 30 years into preaching. So he had been living for the Lord a long time. He had seen a lot of things, made a lot of mistakes, and got back up and kept trusting in the Lord. The Lord had taught him a lot of things during his time walking with the Lord. He was a fisherman, and his name meant the rock. And he was a part of Jesus' inner circle, James, Peter, and John. So he was very intimate with Jesus. And my prayer is always, let me be one that is close to Jesus' heart. Let me be one that hears his heart beat for others and for, for the body of Christ. Let me hear his heart beat for me. And Peter experienced the Mount of Transfiguration. He experiences the raising up of Jairus' daughter. Could you imagine watching somebody raised from the dead, that you are that close to Jesus. See, he's the same God. Yesterday, today, and forever. And we need to believe that he can not only raise the dead again, but save the dead. Save those in the church that are spiritually dry and spiritually dead. He wants to revive us in the church. And what you just seen... That's revival. Yeah. What you just seen is the Spirit of God being able to freely move amongst His people. He doesn't want to be stuffed in a box where He can't move at all. That's why I said when my prayer was when I came here today was, Lord, let it just not be another service where we go in and leave and we don't leave changed. I want to have a service that we come into and the power of the Holy is operating and changes hearts and changes lives and that's what Peter got to experience with the Lord something that Peter went through was a lot of persecution and was the onslaught of the enemy and I don't know about you but I think we've all had our fair shares of onslaught of the enemy We've had our fair shares of valleys. We've had our fair shares of mountains before us and things that we couldn't even see our way through. But step by step by step, God begins to bring us through. Amen. And this is the time that Peter wrote this. It was a time that Nero was reigning as king. And Nero actually persecuted the Christians and began to kill them. I just want to give you a mindset of where Peter was at, give you, paint you a picture of what Peter was actually going through when he wrote this book. He was watching his friends die under the hands of Nero. And actually, I know that I'm actually watching some of my old friends die under the hands of the enemy. I lost five people that I used to hang out with before I was saved this last year. Five of them under the hands of the enemy. Mm. And two of them, I believe, were saved, but the other three weren't. I was watching them die under the onslaught of the enemy. He wrote this to strangers or those pilgrims. And pilgrims met a ho those that were Christians on a hostile earth looking forward to a heavenly country. Amen. Those, he's writing to us. Those that are Christians on a hostile earth looking to a heavenly country. I don't know about you, but when we stand up for Jesus, when we stand up for the righteousness of Christ and the 
truth of the gospel, I'm not talking about a watered down gospel. I'm talking about the truth of the word of God. Jesus Christ and him crucified. The only way of salvation. The only way of sanctification. The only way at all. We will get slandered. We will get talked about. We will get backstabbed. People aren't going to like us. The church is going to split up because not everybody wants to go this narrow way. And that's what was going on. Nero started to begin to put the Christians in a group and just try to pick them off one by one. And that's what the enemy does. He tries to pick us off one by one. And that's who he was writing to during this time. The purpose of this book was trust and obedience in the Lord, even when we suffer. We know that obedience and trust and faith in the Lord when we are suffering isn't always the most easy thing to do. So the purpose of this book was to be steadfast, resist, be steadfast in the faith, not in anything we can do. We can't do it. You can't do it. I can't do it. Only he's the one that's going to be able to bring us through whatever we might be facing. So if we can start at verse 6, it says, Humble, all right, I'm going to say that word again. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. He cares for you. He cares for you. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. Whom resists steadfast in the faith. And I'm going to stop there. Resist steadfast in the faith. I'm going to start at this. Humble yourself. And that is not something that comes easily with us. Yeah. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Do you have anything in your life right now that you feel that God might be pressing on? A pressing situation. God's hand upon us can be really heavy at times because he's doing something in you. See, we must be something before we can do something. We must become something before we can do something for Jesus. And he will use anything, anything in your life to reveal himself to you. He will use anything to change you. A situation, a circumstance, he will use anything to press on you, to mold you, to shape you. Are you maybe going through something at home? At work? At school? With family? Or friends? Or even church? Does the pressures of life beginning to press on you? Financially? Physically? Mentally? Socially? Economically, are you overwhelmed? Mm -hmm. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. The same man that said that said, Beloved, find it not strange when you, uh, the fiery trial comes right. as is to try you. Beloved, find this not strange. Coming from a man that was watching other Christians die before him, imagine the pressure right. to still stay steadfast in the faith, even though he was watching these circumstances around him. We in America find it difficult yeah. to stay steadfast in the faith when certain situations, not even like 
this one, are pressing on us. That same man said, Beloved, find it not strange when this fiery trial comes as to try you. He's testing your faith. We'll mess up. He's not testing your performance. Right, right, He's not good. testing your strength. That's good. He's not testing your willpower. That's right, Can right. you tough it out? Mm. It's okay. Let me tell you this. It is okay to be broken before God. Yes, yes. Never feel like you have to tough it out. Break before God. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God because down in that place is where he will meet you yes. in that place is where he will sing songs of deliverance over you yes. in that place Lord. is where your intimacy Lord. with Jesus Christ comes in that place is where you come to know him yes. Yes. he's testing our faith He's trying and refining your faith That's it. Mm -hmm. to be pure, purified faith. The fire might seem hot, but do you remember Shadrach, Meshach, yes. and Abednego? Yes. Where they would not bow before the king. They said, if, if they, excuse me, but they said, that, that basically, nevertheless, if we go down, we go down. Either way, it doesn't matter. Right, right, right. Because he will deliver me. Mm -hmm. Whether I go to be with him in glory, or whether he delivers me from the fire, he will deliver me. Hallelujah. I just want to read this real quick. Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. Did we not cast three men into the fire? They answered and said, Oh, true, O oh king. And he said, Lo, I see four men loose. Loose. Loose in the fire. See, you might feel bound right now, but those that fire is going to burn off those ropes. You might feel bad, but there's a fourth man in the fire with you. And he said, also, they were walking. They weren't crawling. They weren't groveling. They weren't weeping. They were walking in the fire. It said they have no hurt. Their bodies, this fire, had no power. Their bodies, oh this fire, had no power, nor was the hair on their head singed. Oh, oh, Neither were their coats changed, nor was the smell mm. of the fire upon them. Oh, so God. you might feel like it's really hot yeah. right yeah. now, whatever circumstance or situation that you might be in. But lo, there is four men in the fire and you will be loose. You will be loose. He's using the fire to refine you and change you and burn things off. Though you're going to feel so much lighter than you ever did before. He's going to exalt you in due season. And that king ended up writing a decree mm -hmm. that anybody that came against Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego's God would be put to death. Mm -hmm. He saw God. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're going through, people are watching. That's right. That's right. Whatever you might be facing, there's family members yeah. watching. What, there's co-workers mm -hmm. watching. There are people yeah. watching. And when you walk through that fire, they're going to say, whoa, I see four men in the fire, and he looks like the Son of God. Yes. Yes. Glory. Glory to God. Keep walking. Mm -hmm. Keep trusting. Keep believing. 
Humble is to pino in the Greek, and it meant to de depress or to come low. It's a condition of our heart. God said he resists the proud, and he gives grace to the humble. See, this is what pride will say. It will puff its chest out, and it will say, I'm doing this my way. That would be self-will. Yeah. Then it will say, I got this on my own, Lord. I'll take care of this on my own. Self-reliance. This is my life. I'm doing what I want. Stubborn. Can, you, can we see ourselves? Yeah. Can we see it? Yeah. I can take care of myself on my own. Self-dependence. I can't believe they messed up. I would never do that. <laughs> Haughty, arrogant. Yes. Trusting in anything else other than Christ and Him crucified will always produce pride. And God resists a proud person. Literally, it's a law. If we don't humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, He literally can't allow the Holy Spirit to move in your life. He gives grace, power. He gives grace, unmerited favor. He gives grace, the goodness of God, given to undeserving men. He gives grace, a divine influence upon your and my heart in order to do what God wants us to do. You want to know how to be free? Humble yourself. That's good. That's good. You want to know how to get through what you're going through? Humble yourself. Hallelujah. Stop relying on our own strength. Wow. Stop thinking that we can figure it all out and put all the pieces together and then one plus two equals three. You can't figure it mm. out. Humble yourself. Mm. Decrease. That he may increase. Decrease. That he may increase. Deny your own efforts. Deny your own righteousness. Deny all your own goodness. We can never be good enough. Our goodness is as filthy rags. Our righteousness is as filthy rags before the Lord. There was one way that you got in, and that was the blood of Jesus. And there's one way you're going to stay in, and that's the blood of Jesus. And there's one way you're going to go through, and that's the blood of Jesus. And there's one way you're going to be healed, and that's the blood of Jesus. You want to know the answer? It's the blood of Jesus Christ. That's it, and that's all. There's no other answer. And when you do that, watch him move. Right. Watch him move. Watch him show up. Watch him show out. Watch him do things that you never thought possible. Watch him change your heart like never before. I had a specific situation and my heart was just, it was prone to go one way. It was so stuck and it was just going this way and I'm going this way and I'm going this way and I would fail and I would fail and I would fail. And I was like, I'm going this way. But let me tell you. When I said, nevertheless, mm. nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. When I meant it, when I began to keep surrendering and keep, uh, see, this isn't, this isn't a one-time time deal, guys. This is an everyday deal. This is an every second deal. This is some daily, daily go to the cross. Daily lay your cares at his feet. Daily go to him. I can't do it. God, do it. I can't handle it. God, handle it. I can't change. God, change me. We can't change ourselves. Only the grace of God flowing by the Spirit of God can change you. But if you stick your chest up and say, I'm going to do it my way and I'm going to change, it's not going to happen. He's going to resist you. You're going to frustrate the grace of God. It's not because he doesn't love you. Because this is his way. This is how God had orchestrated it to be done. Think about it. He sent his son to die for you. 
This is His way. That grace that He wants to give you, never ending, never stopping, uninterrupted grace. Think about that daily. Think about what a privilege we have Amen. to walk with Jesus, to allow his spirit to flow through us every day, to, for him to give you divine wisdom yeah. on things that you couldn't even see coming. You ever have the Lord tell you something? Right. And, and all of a sudden, something bad happens, and you're like, man, I'm glad I listened. Or sometimes we're like, man, I wish I listened, right? right? Because sometimes we don't listen, okay? And we need to look back to Jesus. But he'll give you divine guidance and, and divine wisdom and divine leading. No one else on earth has that privilege. But we do. Because we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Then it says, see... We always, when we humble ourselves, we always think we're like losing out. But it says, come on, I know. Yeah. So then it says, he will exalt you in due season. Okay? He is the God of the seasons. He knows what season you are in right now. He knows what circumstance you're facing and what you're going through. He is the author of your season. So don't look up to him and say, Lord, do you see what I am going through? <laughs> of course he sees what you are going through. He divinely orchestrated what you are going through. Or he allowed it to happen to test and refine our faith. He has great plans for you. Do not be discouraged. He says, Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. He has great victories, great healings, great deliverances, great wisdom and guidance and power that you've never experienced before. He has a good future for you. Hold fast, saint. Hold fast. He has good things in store for you. And for him to not give you good would be denying his character. Think about that. For him to not do right by you would deny his character. His character is true, and it's good, and it's merciful, and it's compassionate, and it's loving, unconditional love. We think with condition. Do for me, I'll do for you. That's not how God thinks. He has an unconditional love for you. In due season, there is a season and a time and every purpose under heaven. That's what Ecclesiastes says. So your season that you're in, I might not be in that season right now. You might be in a hard season and I might be floating on clouds. But you better believe that one day I'm going to be in that hard season. And you know what's so great about the body of Christ is we should be helping one another. Say, you're in a hard season, and you're on a mountaintop. Will that person on the mountaintop grab that person in the valley and encourage them yeah. to keep yeah. going? That's what the body of Christ is all about. It's not to look at each other and say, your imperfection and this imperfection and that and this and that and this difference, and I grew up this way and that way and think that. No, look to Jesus. Yeah. Look to Jesus. Yeah. Grab each other along the way because there's an onslaught of the enemy trying to rob your faith. You want to know what Satan's after? He's after your faith. If he can get your faith, he's got everything. Mm. Defend your faith. Protect your faith. Protect your anointing upon your life. Defend each other. Mm. Cover each other in prayer. We don't just come here and preach and sing. We pray for you. We war for you. I don't know all of you by name, but I don't need to. He knows you by name. He knows what you're facing and what you're going through. War for each other. All right. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due season. Can I use one of your kids here? How about you and Mel? Robert, will you come here? Rand, will you come here? You too, Dad. 
You too, sir. Yeah, you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's your name? Matt. Okay, come here. Stay right here. All right. I want two of you guys over here and two of you guys over here. <coughs> he is a Christian, okay? You guys can sit in the chairs if you want, that's fine. Fear. You are fear. Give me your scariest face. <laughs> okay? Doubt. Tell him he's not going to make it. <laughs>
But he said, cast your cares, every distraction upon him. If you say, God, I don't know how you're going to figure this out. I don't know how you're going to fix this. Well, I have news for you. The same hands that were nailed to the cross for yes, you yes. are the same hands that you are putting your cares in. Amen. Do you think that he wouldn't take care of you? He already was nailed to the cross for you. He's going to take care of you. Because you are his concern. And he has your best interest Amen. in mind. Amen. And sometimes we don't feel like he has our best interest in mind. Right. Because sometimes the process is painful. Right. Right. Sometimes it hurts. And I'm not going to preach a gospel that says that it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Because the truth of the matter is it does. But humble yourself mm -hmm. under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you. Cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. You know what becomes our problem? Doubt and unbelief. Doubt and unbelief creeps in, and that's what he's after. Turn your face back towards Jesus. Turn your heart back towards Jesus. Turn your eyes back towards Jesus. See, if I'm riding a bike and I'm looking forward, that's the way I'm going. But if I look over here, my handlebars are going to begin to go that way. Keep your eyes set on Jesus. Keep your heart set on Jesus. Keep your mind set on Jesus. When you get up in the morning, put your feet on the ground. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to praise him. Because when you begin to praise him, he inhabits the praises of his people. And everything has to flee. That's a way of humbling ourselves before God. Begin to praise him. Begin to praise him. And every line, every tactic, every snare will begin to flee. And you're casting your cares upon him. But then it says, through this process... Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. You have an adversary. You do have an opponent. And he is out for keeps. He is after you, and he is after your family, and he is after your children, and he is after your friends, and he is after your co-workers. And he plays for keeps. Do not take lightly the enemy. He said, how do... A commander gives orders in an army, right? Mm -hmm. And when you're in a war and bullets are flying past your face, you might want to listen to the commander when he gives you an order. Because if you don't listen to the commander, you can end up dead. Mm -hmm. And... This commander says, be sober. Sober in the Greek meant mentally controlled. Mind battle. Yeah. Whereas most of our battles, in our mind. He said, be sober. Satan likes to sow seeds in our mind. Sow resentments in our mind. Sow unforgiveness in our mind. Sow discontentment in our mind, so accusations of others even in the church in our mind. He sows it within your family in your mind, your boss in your mind, okay? There's so many different things that the enemy will try to sow in your mind, anger at each other or even at God. Look what he did. Look where he left you. But see, a mind that's set on Jesus. Right. See, once you see something or hear something, don't you have to process it? Mm -hmm. Your mind has to process it. It doesn't even matter if it's something you want to hear. You ever walk by somebody in a room and you've overheard something in their conversation and all of a sudden your mind's like ding, 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 ding. It's like going in a million different directions and you're like, you have to process information. Mm -hmm. 
our mind has to process information. But the Bible said to be sober, to be mentally controlled, not entangled with the things of this world, but kingdom-minded. Not to be focused on self, but Christ-centered. Not to be desensitized by allowing sin to creep in. Okay? But always staying on guard. See, I was I'm gonna use the example of alcohol. Desensitizing. One drink, desensitized. Two drinks, more desensitized. Three drinks, obliterated. On and on and on and on. The more that you drink, the more that you are desensitized. The more that, see, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. So the more that we allow lies to be sown or, or sin to creep in, and pride to come, and unforgiveness, resentments, and angers, and all these different things, okay? God's not coming for the outward. He's coming for the inward. Because when your inward is right, your outward will be right. When your heart is right, then it will come out with your relationship with God. So he's dealing with our hearts. So don't allow things to just kind of come by and come in and come out. Because church, we will be desensitized. And we don't want to be a desensitized church. We want to be a sensitive church. Mm. Sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Sensitive to His moving. Because one day there might be somebody that's unsaved that the Lord speaks to you and says, Go tell them about me. Right. But we're right. too entangled with the things in our mind and the things of this world that we miss an opportunity to tell somebody else about Jesus. Yeah. Or maybe we're so entangled at our home and the things in our mind that we miss feeding the flock and nurturing our children and the things of God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Don't miss what God has for us by desensitizing <clears throat> ourselves. Mm -hmm. Letting little things creep in and creep out. Keep your mind Set on things above, not on things of this earth. Amen. He said then, let me rewind, renew your mind daily. Mm. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Starts with our mind. Starts with where our mind is focused. Start with what we're reading, looking at. Keep your mind on Christ, and he will transform your mind. I do not think the same way I did when I got saved at 23. I'm now 30. I do not think the same way anymore. I don't look at things the same way anymore. Right, right. He transforms our mind, but it must be done daily, daily walking with Jesus. And then he said, be vigilant, means be on guard, be awake. Don't be asleep. Be watchful. Are you watching? Are your eyes open? And I don't just mean these ones, I mean spiritually. Are our eyes open? About what's going on. See, because the enemy is surrounding us on all sides. He doesn't take a nap. He doesn't take a break. He's always after you. That's right. And even will use our own fleshly tendencies to trip us up. He's always after us. So stay on guard. If you are sober... If you, are watch if you are looking to Jesus, you will be watchful. They go hand in hand. If you were drunk, you wouldn't be very watchful. You would be all over the place. So it's the same thing in the spirit. If you are keeping your mind fixed on Jesus, you will be vigilant. So he says, be vigilant. Be on guard. Be aware of danger. Now, I want to say this. Do not be paralyzed in fear. That's right. Okay? Watchful doesn't mean you're looking behind, behind every bush for a demon. Okay? Watchful doesn't mean that everybody else is out to get you. Watchful doesn't mean, okay, because we can go extreme with some things, and then all of a sudden, everybody is out to get us, and we're running in fear, and we're paralyzed, and we can't even function or live correctly. 
correctly. That's not what I mean. Okay? I've been there. Okay? I've been looking for demons behind every bush. And it's not a fun experience. Okay? So, just be on guard. Be on guard of your surroundings and what's going on spiritually. Right, right. With your relationship with God. Tend to those things. In the beginning of the chapter, he, he encouraged the ministers. Okay? You might be a minister over your own home. Mm -hmm. You might be a minister to the children. Mm -hmm. You might be a minister in your workplace. You might be a minister behind a pulpit or behind a piano or behind the drums or behind the sax. You might be a minister anywhere. And he encouraged them, be an example and feed the flock. That's what he told them to do. Nourish and tend to the flock. Take care of the flock. Take care of the people. But that starts with us first. See, what we do with our relationship with God is an automatic outflow of what comes out of us. So tend to your relationship. Nourish your relationship. Take care of your relationship. If you were married and you didn't talk to each other, you would be probably divorced really soon. <laughs> or living miserably. <laughs> okay? So you want to tend to your relationship with God. Or you're not going to hear Him. Amen. But He will do anything to get your attention. So don't think He's going to leave you alone because He's not. Okay? The Holy Spirit is relentless and He will chase you down and He will come after you and He will get a hold of you one way or the other. So I suggest you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due season. Now who's our enemy? The devil? He's our opponent. He is a traducer. And I didn't even know what that word meant, so I had to look it up. And it meant to expose, to shame, to blame others by means of falsehood. Have you ever had the enemy constantly reminding you of your sin? Mm -hmm. Or of your past? Haunting you with everything you have done in your past. Well, I've got news for him. It's under the blood. Yeah. It's all yeah. under the blood. Whatever the enemy is sowing in your heart or your mind is under the blood. Does he remind you of a weakness? We might, listen, we all have present things that we are weak in. Okay, so don't than the next because we all have things in our hearts in our minds in our spirit and our emotions that need to be changed and need to be strengthened yes. and need to be renewed by the power and the spirit of God That's right. so don't let the enemy constantly remind you of your weakness yes I know it is I I am weak yes. I am Lord and I need your grace to change me yes. he is not surprised at your humanity. Amen. He knew you were human when he died on the cross. So it's okay. It's okay to look at that weakness and say, God, I'm weak and I need you in this area. God changed me in this area. But don't dwell there. Right. Don't right. stare at your sin. Don't stare at your weakness. Don't stare at your situation. Because when you do that, it gets bigger. Yeah. Something that you stare at will get bigger and bigger and bigger. Stare at your God. Yeah. Look at your God. Because he will get bigger and bigger and bigger than your problem. Yeah. And then before you know it, it, you're already through the sea. Mm -hmm. He already opened up the Red Sea. And yeah. you look back.
He is my God. You can claim that today. That is my God. He is on my side. He is fighting for me. Get that in your spirit today. If you don't live with anything else, he is my God. You claim it for yourself. You are a child of God. You are bought with a price. You are bought with the blood of Jesus. There's nothing too big for him. The enemy always trying to seduce you, allure you, draw you away, and lie to you. But that's why he is a false accuser. False. 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 It's false. Whatever he's telling you, bring your lie to the truth and let God expose it for yes. what it is. Yes. It's a lie. It's false. It's false. You know what you want to believe? You want to believe what the Bible says. You want to know what God says about you? Read it in the Bible what God says about you. I don't care what other people say about you. I don't care what I say about myself. I, it only matters what Jesus right, Christ right. has to say about you. And then it says, and this is another example before I close, which I thought was pretty cool. A woman in my uh, preaching class actually gave this. I told her I was going to use it, so I didn't steal it. Um, the roaring lion. A roaring lion. Well, a lion is 300 to 500 pounds. That's big. The enemy can seem really, really big at times. And the situation can seem really, really heavy at times and it's weighing on you day in and day out 300 to 500 pounds you know what the, the uh, lion does he seeks to prey on smaller and weaker animals mm -hmm. think about that spiritually smaller and weaker animals that's why it's so important for us to protect and to defend each other to pray for one another. You don't even have to know the situation, but guard them. Guard them as if it was your own soul. Guard your children as if they were your own soul. You know how you would fight for your family? Fight for, we are family. We are the blood bought family. So we need to fight and guard each other because he's after the smaller and the weaker. The strong aren't exempt either. Because when they're really hungry, they go after the elephant. Mm. They're four feet to eight feet long. So I think that's pretty tall. Mm. They run 50 miles per hour. So they're fast. Constantly. Mm. They, they can out, outrun a car, outrun me, mm. outrun you. <laughs> they can outrun you. You can hear a lion roar five miles away oh, wow. five miles and they roar before they attack hmm. think about that spiritually hmm. you think the enemy is right there right on your neck but they can roar up to five miles away and it's to instill fear hmm. right. they try to cripple you wow. before they attack they try to get you paralyzed in fear before they attack. They also roar because they say, this is my territory. They proclaim their territory. That's what they're doing. But I have news for the devil. This is God's territory. This is God's land. Even America as a nation is God's land still. We are his church. This is his territory. This is where he dwells. We are the body of Christ. We are the temples of the Holy Ghost. We are those filled with power and filled with his spirit. This is his territory. When God comes back, and I use this all the time. He's going to say, mine, 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 mine. It's all mine. So what the enemy thought was his is not really his. It's all God's. It's God's territory. So he can roar all he wants. But it's our job to be watchful and vigilant. Watch.
watchful and vigilant. Then it says, as he's proclaiming his territory, I want you to think about this, how the enemy proclaims his territory here on, in this land. He infiltrates through the music. He infiltrates through movies. He infiltrates through magazines, through video games, through the school system. Anywhere he can. Sneaks it in. Slips it in. Little by little. Or even blatantly. But everything that you turn on that represents the world, that represents Satan, it's like him roaring. Like, this is my territory. This is my territory. But this is God's territory. His son bought us with the blood of Jesus. And this is, we are his. He is our God. They travel in large groups. Ready for this? Their groups are called prides. <laughs> Lions groups are called groups of prides. And what does he try to get us to do? Look at self. Right. Look at our own strength. Right. Look at our own willpower. Right. He tries to puff us up. Right. Right. Because God resists the proud. Right. They travel in prides. <laughs> Think about this nation. Travel in prides. When stalking its prey, it will lie in wait for hours. Right. For hours. For hours. It hunts under the cover of darkness. Mm -hmm. It does not hunt in the light. Mm -hmm. It hunts under the cover of darkness. It will stalk its prey without detection. So you won't know. Wow. But when I read that, I said, no, 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 no. I have a power greater than myself. Yeah. And I have something in me. Greater than any enemy. I have something greater than my flesh and greater than the devil and greater than this world. Because he who is in me yes. is greater than he who is in this world. So no, I will detect. I will detect by the Spirit of God when something is coming. And it could be you ever have a spirit tell you before or you have just an unsettling, there's something unsettling. And, and the Lord's moving. He's moving. And you're not so sure what it is yet. He begins to reveal it piece by piece by piece by piece. You have something in you that will detect when danger is coming. You have something in you that will show you things to come. You have something in you greater than every enemy. You have the spirit of God, the things that the natural mind can't see, the natural mind can't hear, the natural mind can't detect. The spirit of God will reveal those things to you. Amen. Listen for him. Read his word. They observe their prey in the day, but they'll wait till the night to deceive you. They'll watch you. And then they work as a team. You ever have circumstance over circumstance over situation over situation over complication over problem? Just it feels like it's circling you, surrounding you, day in and day out. I'm like, can I ever get a breath? Can I ever breathe? Constant and constant and constant circling you. That's what the lions do. And they literally do that to get you in a corner. They corner you off. But you know what? The enemy never strikes from the front. The lion never strikes from the front. They strike from the sides and they strike from the back. Mm -hmm. Stay steadfast in the faith. Now, if you'd come up. Stay steadfast. Brian, if you wanted to come up and Stay steadfast. Resist in the faith. Resist him. It says, whom resist steadfast in the faith? Resist means to stand or to oppose. You see, this is your job. To take a stand and to oppose when the enemy comes against you. 
And then it says steadfast. You are stable and you are solid. But then it says in the faith. Not anything you can do. Not anything you can handle. And if you would all stand up with me, please. The name of my message was resist steadfast in the faith. And I don't know what you were going through this morning. I don't know what you're facing. But God knows. He met us here this morning before service, before the preaching of the word even came about. There's something that he wants to do. If, he want, if you need your faith strengthened because it's been weakened, or you just need an extra dose, an extra touch of the Holy Spirit, if you need him to speak life where maybe death has come in or, or darkness, or the enemy has been lying to you for so long that you need God to break through that lie. The enemy will tell you that there's no healing. He will tell you that there's no freedom, that there's no liberty, that your family won't get saved. It is a lie. Whatever you need, I invite you to come up as Naya plays and cast your cares upon him. Humble yourself at the altar under the mighty hand of God and let him fight your behalf. I know I need him to fight on mine. I know I need him to change some things in my life and some things in my heart.